So you've been watching my videos and you've been following this GBB series, shall we? I might make a series. I might make a playlist for just the VFC SMG gas blowbacks. But these are the very modern-esque what we have to offer from SIG and BNT with the APC9 and the MPX. The MPX being the K. Obviously, we're going to pimp this up. We're also going to pimp this up. There are issues on both. We have a loose fit in stock and receiver on the APC9. We have a loose fit in rail and res well, the, re the receiver's not too bad on this one. You know, I'm not going to pull it to pieces for the sake of it. But we've got some issues to fix. We've got some pimpage to do. So, as, as much as I like the modern stuff, today we're going to be looking at a different SMG, which is more of an historic piece, depending on when you were born. But this is the H&K, Humorex, VFC, all that good stuff, gas blowback. I don't know why it's upside down in the box, this is just the way it came. We get another speed loader with the VFC style adapter. We get safety precautions, we get a manual. I ain't gonna look at that unless I really need to. We get the lovely MP5K PDW. And the reason I went for the PDW was the MP5K is nice, it's nice and short, but to be usable really, you want a stock. And yes, I did look, I was watching a MP5K sort of history video that I found on YouTube. It was very informative. If I can remember the link, I'll put it down in the description below. Go check that out if you want to know more about the real counterpart of this thing. But let's take a look at what VFC and Humorex have got to offer us. So let's get this dreaded box out the way. We don't want to see the box anymore. And, oh, we've got, tell you what, boys and girls. There's some money on the bench here. Um, I have gone on a massive GBB SMG purchasing spree at, at, at the moment. You know, I have sold a lot of stuff. You know, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not super rich. Um, I just, you know, don't spend my money on going out, getting absolutely drunk out. Why isn't the mag going in? Getting drunk out of my face anymore. And I'm a massive airsoft enthusiast. So what better to spend the money on and bring you guys content. So... But we're going to get these modern counterparts out the way. Let's get them set to one side. APC9 and MPX go out the way. There's a lot of black going on. But here it is. The VFC MP5K PDW. Oh, yeah. Nostalgia. Um, this thing is a hefty beast. And it's the first VFC SMG that hasn't really got any rattle in it. There's a tiny bit in the stock, which you're going to get with a folding stock. And there's a minute amount in the grip, which I'm not too fussed about. So let's take the mag out here. But you know what I'm going to have to do first? I'm going to have to wrap the bolt. Then we're going to have to put the charger handle up. And can we do it? Yes. You can very much do the HK slap if you want to feel like a total badass on the field. And to be honest with you, if you go out there and you buy a VFC or another brand, Gas Blowback MP5, and you just shove the mag in and rack the bolt, I'm going to be very disappointed in you because everybody knows you need to get into that rhythm of you know, the manual of arms for the MP5, which I'm pretty sure HK, HK, that was their method of doing it, locking the charging handle up to the top, inserting your mag, and then slapping that handle down obviously it's going to stop because it uses the mag to stop the bolt so i'm not going to smack it down you don't have to smack it down either you could very much use your thumb and do the thumb wars with it so what is this it's a gas blowback mp5kw pdw um i'm pretty certain that a lot of this is steel i do have a magnet somewhere let's grab one crude one as it must but it's a sistema motor so the body's steel, the front end steel, the barrel steel, the stock steel, trigger's not. Perhaps some of those components might be. Who knows? But there is a lot of steel parts on this. I mean, everybody gets bent out of shape with steel. Um, yes, steel is great. It's what they used back then. In terms of a modern material, it's not really superior. 
you can get a lot of aluminium grades like 70 75 and upwards specialty aluminiums which are lighter stronger and obviously weigh or again lighter weigh a hell of a lot less than steel i can imagine that a lot of modern firearm manufacturers are moving away from steel where they can and using exotic materials so if your mp5 doesn't have steel counterparts it's not the end of the world if your are you know generic airsoft gun doesn't have steel parts it's not the end of the world yes the airsoft industry likes to use pot metal alloys zinc alloys that really don't last very long at all that being said out the way i am really happy that this is steel because it just that is how the real one is made um, if it wasn't steel and it felt good i wouldn't really be too bothered about it it wouldn't be a red flag to me and put me off buying one but it's nice to know that it's you know genuine so we're going to try and pull this sticker off here. I hate it when manufacturers do this. Why do they do it? I'm telling you the calibre. And you, they always use these bloody labels that won't come off properly. Does my head in. I'll fix that later. Made in Taiwan one there as well. God, it annoys me. I have to get some alcohol now and get it off. So, it's a gas blowback airsoft gun. It uses 30 round mp5 style magazines these look some of the realist most realistic looking magazines that i've seen in terms of replicas it is a vfc but the valve is on the bottom now you do have a metal structure in here with a separate part for the feed um, and they do have a hell of a massive gas reservoir in these compared to other um, products on the market and then you do have a steel casing that goes off it so they do feel very authentic it's got a really nice weight to it the lower on this is the navy style so you've got safe semi and you've got full auto you do get some mp5s that have the three burst but to be honest with you if i did buy an mp5 in the same format like a full size let's say i find a full size and it does have that three burst on there it's probably going to be the first thing that i swap out because i'm really not too bothered about a three round burst on mp5 i just want i, I presume i did watch i think it was explosive enterprises video he does a very detailed review and he was saying that you know the three round burst trigger pack uh, lower for the mp5 is a little bit more complicated and it's more things to go wrong so i'm glad this is just the safe semi and the auto here what we're going to do we're going to get some gas in this thing but first i'm going to tell you how we adjust the hop so first we need to punch this front pin out so we're going to tap this out with a pin and a hammer because it is quite tight because the handguard sort of pushes forward onto the pin and that's how it sits in place now unlike AEG style mp5s where you have to do that weird sort of arm wrist dance and you have to like do all this weird stuff to sort of push it over the front sight block these you can just pull straight down very cool indeed now the hop is a wheel that's fixed onto the the outer barrel here and um I'm guessing that you turn it counterclockwise for more and clockwise for for less, but I could be separate, you know, I could be completely wrong. It was just a sort of little arrow on here earlier. But refer to your manual for the correct way to turn your hop-up dial. I have already seen companies doing improved versions of this, so they've got like a CNC aluminium uh ring, and they also come with a tool, so it's a little bit easier to sort of adjust. I'm going to pop the grip back on there and you can see it just kind of loosely sits in and then we can push the pin in and i'm so tempted if this midwest industries handguard for the mpx is going to be nice he's getting one for this because m lock is just super cool but uh you know i almost want to keep it for that kind of broom handle style grip what i will say for my personal sort of comfort shall we say um, holding it like this, my my hand does hit the um, the magazine here. So having, you know, sort of like a little M lock handguard where I can kind of hold it underneath like that might be a little bit easier for me. But that being said, let's carry on with this overview. So we're going to punch these two pins out on the rear to take the stock off. So we're going to tap these out with a pin and a hammer here. Only because when these things are new, 
they are pretty damn tight. Well, the top one isn't. So we can punch the top one out. We can pull the bottom one out. No, we can't. Let's try push that out with the punch. There we go. So we pull this pin out and then we can pull the stock off the back here. So you've got this sort of yellow siliconized rubberized buffer here now to re keep removing the uh, lower you can actually pivot this down but if you want to remove it completely you will have to remove the front pin which is situated just in front of the trigger here and then we can remove the trigger pack so very interesting looking indeed and i did i have seen quite a few people refer to this part as metal but i've also seen people refer to it as plastic as well so i'm not too sure what material that is um maybe it's just like a cast metal which seems like plastic i'm not too sure so the trigger on the mp5 is to be desired um vfc have done so well with their triggers on the other platforms now they are newer but the mp5 is really squishy sorry i'm gonna have to let that forward there it is very squishy indeed. I watched an Explosive Enterprises video. I'm pretty sure he was referring to you could use semi-auto if the trigger's only half pulled. And I'm pretty sure he said that when they were used to fire them, they used to fire it in like a dual sort of system like that. I think he might have been talking about the full size. So I don't know if this is the same or if it's different. But there we have full auto as well. In terms of triggers... This one, it's not bad, but it's not good. Um, it works. So once we've got that out of the way, we can pull the bolt out the back. Now the bolt here is very light indeed. It's got this plunger style system with the spring, much like the MPX. And we also have a buffer and a very, very strong um, return spring at the back here, which is going to bounce that back nice and uh, quickly for you when you're using your semi on full auto. That's pretty much mostly disassembled. I'm not sure how we would pull the hop unit out. Um, that will have to be in a later video because we'll have to see about changing the hop rubber out. Um, after using the Sniper Mechanics Flamingo hop rubber in a lot of my guns, it's probably going to be the rubber that I fit in pretty much most of my gas blowback stuff now because the rubber performs so well. Um, so that is how you field strip your MP5K. Your full size MP5 will be very similar. Um, but yeah, not too much grease on this one. Um, there is the restrictor valve in there, much like the APC9. To be honest, I didn't check the MPX, so we'll have to look at that in a future video. So this is basically like a hex nut or hex grub screw it's a 2.5 mil allen key and it's a hex nut that's got slots cut into it so it allows gas to flow through i mean i'm not too sure if people are getting you know i've seen people getting like 340 350 fps with this thing i'm not sure if that's with that fitted i'm gonna say in my opinion it's probably not gonna be that high just because there's not a lot of gas going to be coming out that that nozzle with that much heavy restriction in there. So, but at the end of the day, we can just pull it out and we can see what the power runs at when we do that. We'll be doing that with the APC9 and the MPX if we find one in there as well. Putting it back together, we slide the bolt back into the upper. I'm going to put the lower on first. So I'm going to slide this into position. Am I? Like so, pop the front pin in. Might have to line the mag release up because I know that does like to shift, apparently. Front pin goes in. We can put the stock on the back here, which is very, very nice fitting, if I'm honest. I've done the QC on that. Why they couldn't get that right with my uh, APC9, I don't know. So let's tap this pin home. You'll notice that I'm using a brass head so I don't damage anything. 
and there it is back together. We'll do a quick function check. That's how bad the trigger is. You can let go of it so slowly that it doesn't actually reset. There you go. So we've got sticky trigger syndrome. Now if I release it faster, it does work. So let's get some gas. Oh, in fact, no, we can't. See now with the VFC MP5 series, we can't actually dry fire it unless we were to jam some kind of thing in the mag because the bolt actually uses the follower and it jams the nozzle against it to stop firing. So we could we could fire one round technically. Um, so we'll obviously have to wait for a firing video to give this a go. But that is a massive pain. A lot of us who own gas blowbacks like to be able to dry fire them, you know. But we can cock it, we can put a mag in and it will fire one round and it will lock. And that's how it looks like that. You don't get any click. Put the mag, put the uh, bolt lever up, take the mag out, put a new one in. And if you're not HK slapping it, then you're just not doing it right. You can do it a whole different, load of different ways. Um, obviously fitting some kind of uh, optic on here is gonna heed your ability to do that. But to be honest with you, with something like this, I'm probably not gonna be running an optic on it anyway. So thanks for tuning into this first video on this MP5K PW. What should we look at next on this platform? Note down in the comments below and I will try and cover it on video. I'll of course be taking this fully apart to look at the barrel and hop system and how that works. We'll also be taking the magazine apart to see what's going on there. And uh, yeah, I think I want to order a suppressor for this thing because I think they look really cool with suppressors on. It is really small with the stock folded. Um, here's, an, here's an M4 stock, Magpul stock. It really isn't big at all, but it is heavy. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get some more mags for this and run this in a game. Until I get some more mags, it would be useless. So, um, but I have heard really great results from other people saying that these these magazines hold so much gas that you can fill them up three or four times with BBs and you can keep yourself in the game fighting for longer. So. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to order a load of mags because I want to be doing some tactical reloads um, and having some fun on the field. Because at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, what's the point? Thank you very much for tuning into this very lengthy video. Sorry, as always, if I tatter on about stupid things that don't make any sense or don't matter. But as always, from me and Bench, thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Do you know what? I didn't feel right ending the video that way where we can't test the rate of fire of this thing and how snappy it is. So I'm going to take a mag. It won't be on camera, but you'll be able to hear it at least. I'm going to take some BBs. I'm going to fill it up. And the first thing I want to say, this has got to be one of the easiest gas blowback mags ever to fill up with BBs. Now watch this. You fill it straight down. I'll do it the other way just so they're going properly. And... That is full. I mean, I've never known a gas blow-up mag be so easy to fill up. So, of course, got the safety specs on. I'm going to lock that bolt to the rear. I'm going to slap a mag in. I'm going to put it on safe just to be sure. And we are going to slap that bitch. And we're going to say, select semi-auto first. Um, I haven't put any more gas in this mag, so we'll see what it does. Semi-auto. Super, super responsive and full auto. And yeah, we run out of gas. I didn't really put much in there. I'm just put an extra squirt in. Because I only did like a couple of seconds, didn't I really? So you can tell, you can hear how much gas gains that mag. So we'll just get rid of the uh, last few BBs. What I'll note is this magazine isn't getting as cold as the MPX did. So let's... Make sure we've got one chamber. Yes, I have. Let's do mag. <laughs> that rate of fire is so cool. I think it's faster than the real one, but honestly, I don't care. That is how I'd run it. 
and it stop, stops by the nozzle hitting the mag. Not a great system if I'm honest, but it's the way they do it, so what can we tell? Now, what I will say is that short burst has chonked up the rubber on the mag. So I've put one mag through the gun and that rubber is damaged. So what I will say is this rubber is really loose. Can you see it moving? So it moves up and down. <sighs> it's always something, can't there? So we'll have to persevere with this. I know some people have reported the same thing, but what can we do? If it's gonna damage it in one mag, then it's only gonna get worse, isn't it really? But that rubber is so loose in the mag, it's like it needs shimming or something. So anyway, just thought I'd uh, do a quick full auto demonstration before we went. So yeah, this time I'm really going. See you later guys.